The story of John Ruskin, or more notably known as Nardwar, is absolutely bonkers. I can all but guarantee you know who Nardwar is if you're watching this, and if you don't, you need to go watch some of his interviews ASAP, after finishing this video of course. To begin, there are some immediate questions raised whenever he's brought up, like is Nardwar even his real name, or how does this guy know so much about the people he interviews? First, let's get a little background on him, as at least to me, he's one of the most interesting personalities on the internet and radio today. I've been wanting to do a video about Nardwar since I started writing these scripts, and ever since I saw the 1997 video of him questioning the Canadian Prime Minister, I was hooked. Just in case you haven't heard of him though, he's a music journalist, musician, interviewer, radio personality, and all around legend in the music industry. He stated that the name Nardwar was created because it's just a dumb stupid name like Sting or Sinbad perfectly encapsulating his energy within his name. Known for his guerrilla style interviews, dapper looking attire, and unique voice, he's been doing all of this for over 35 years and is beloved by many, but also considered controversial by others. He's probably most known for his amazing interviews with various rappers being clipped on TikTok and YouTube shorts as well as compilations wowing his interviewees with incredibly deep and sometimes unsettling amounts of research. He generally starts off his interviews by asking who are you and then giving a deeply personalized gift which to me is probably one of the most genius things that Nardwar does. Doing this does two things. For one, it allows the person being interviewed to let their guard down a bit, because in many celebrity interviews they're always being asked the same boring questions and signals to them that this is not going to be their usual interview that they've done a thousand times. Along with that, it shows them that Nardwar genuinely cares about the people he's talking to, immediately forming a connection with them, sort of skipping the legwork of having a longer form relationship. He's even got his own theme song playing at the start of his interviews in video form, along with the classic phrases like Keep on rockin' in the free world and do 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 To put it simply, he's just one of those people that leaves a permanent mark on you, whether you're the one being interviewed or just watching him work. Let's investigate how Nardwar came to be from his early childhood all the way to the present day where he's become an icon within the music industry. John was born in Vancouver, Canada in 1968 where he was raised. It's actually pretty hard to find much personal info on him as he's not been inclined to go into details during interviews of him or on his social media. However, just like how Canada Land attempted to Nardwar Nardwar by writing an article about him, we'll be attempting to add to their investigation and give people a fuller picture of who Nardwar is and what he's accomplished. My goal with this video is rather ambiguous as I'm just interested in his career and I hope if you stumbled onto this video that you'll become a Nardwar fan just as I had in the past. Anyways, his mother Olga Ruskin was a local journalist, high school teacher, and historian while his father Vernon was an engineer. Just from this little bit of information we start to piece together how Nardwar came to be. His mother exposed him to the world of research and journalism, bringing him to local history society meetups in Vancouver which would be the catalyst for the creation of the media personality we know today. Before this though, it seemed like he was destined to be in the public eye, because in elementary school he'd won a public speaking contest. If you've ever watched his interviews, it's very clear he gives absolutely zero f**ks about what people think of him or his mannerisms, and is comfortable in his own body when in front of hundreds or thousands of people. However, there is some evidence that he actually does have a fear of public speaking but just powers through it, because in 2009 he was interviewed by a fan saying, Well actually I was in my basement because I was scared to go to the gigs. We can't really know for sure, but whatever the case may be, he clearly has a talent for it. What really started everything though was his first recorded interview during 1985 in his secondary school named Hillside. What led to this happening was his joining of the student council at his school. He began booking bands for school events through the student council and it was here where he conducted his first interview that was recorded. He was interviewing Art Bergman and Tom Upex from the Vancouver based band Poisoned who were playing at a school dance. You can just tell from the short 3 minute segment that young Nardwar has something particular about him. Maybe it's the way he talks or his energetic cadence, but whatever it is, he nailed his style. He hadn't created the moniker Nardwar just yet as that would come a year later, but an icon was born here even though nobody quite knew it yet. Even from this first interview, Nardwar had clearly done his homework, bringing up a record that Poison did which references their school hillside on the inside cover. Beyond this, it's basically impossible to find any real info about Nardwar's early life, so this segment will be cut short here, but if you have any extra info, please feel free to drop it in the comments. 
Let's start off in 1986, freshly off Nardwar's first recorded interview, which was the first year he was known as Nardwar. During this time, he got accepted into UBC, or University of British Columbia in Vancouver, where he was raised. His stint in college is where the ball really started rolling for him, as he started volunteering at the college radio station CITR. I found it almost impossible to find his first broadcast here, and the CITR website archive only goes back to 2006. But luckily, Nardwar has posted several broadcasts onto his YouTube channel, the first being from 1987. Here he gave a tour of the radio station studio where he talks to multiple radio personalities like Russell Slide, who was a sports broadcaster at the time. This tour perfectly encapsulates the frenetic energy his modern interviews have, along with a somewhat informal style of recording. I think it's important to note here that he'd not yet solidified his look, as he can be seen sporting a regular striped t-shirt and a buzz cut, but his recording and interview style can be traced back as early as this. He'd go on to show the different departments of the radio station along with its employees. Interestingly though, someone in the video can be heard asking, what's this for? And Nardwar replies, home use, chuckling to himself. It's moments like these where you can tell Nardwar is simply engrossed in his job and environment as the tour was simply recorded for himself. Even after graduating in 1990, he continued to host his show on CITR for 19 years, never missing a single broadcast during the time period. Reading an article from TheOutline.com, it was noted that before Nardwar ever got a larger audience on the internet, he logged over 10,000 hours of interviewing. An absolutely staggering number to think about, considering this was before he became beloved by many on YouTube and Twitter, clearly outlining he was dedicated to his craft and had a love of the job. Nardwar had actually said something during a GQ piece, which often doesn't happen, where he stated that the way I approach interviews basically is inspired by Arsenio Hall. If you've ever seen him doing stand-up, this makes perfect sense, as he always seems way too excited to be working just like Nardwar. In 1988, there was a short profile done on Nardwar, although to me it's unclear who produced it or if Nardwar himself did it. But he uploaded a short 50 second clip to his YouTube channel with the footage of him talking about his own show at CITR, and a pretty poignant clip can be seen at the end of the video. The unnamed interviewer asks him, Do you have any idea what you're going to do once you get out of university, you know, when you grow up? And Nardwar answers, My parents have an idea. My dad would like me to be an engineer. And what do you think about that? I'm going to try to be an engineer, but I don't think I'll be an engineer. Something I've always been curious about was his outfit and where it came from. The earliest footage I could find of him wearing a somewhat bombastic outfit was in 1995, where Nardwar was visiting the New York theater waiting to see Ringo Starr rehearsing. He can be seen here with his unkempt long hair and a neon green suit jacket, although the beanie and beret were strangely absent. Now that we've covered some of his earlier works before the internet era, let's move on to his YouTube renaissance which started in 2006, only a year after YouTube's creation. It's here where most people know Nardwar from, watching compilations or videos he's uploaded himself to YouTube, interviewing various celebrities, bands, and music artists. However, his first interview uploaded was with none of those people. Instead, it was former VP Dan Quayle working under President George H.W. Bush from 1989 to 93. This interview was a single question. Hi, Mr. Quill. Who's the Prime Minister of Canada? It was this video that started the format for Nardwar that he'd later become famous for. His titles always read Nardwar vs. X, X being the person interviewed. Even this early, he was seen shoving the mic into people's faces, which got a lot of people upset, along with asking out-of-pocket questions. To me, this is the real start of Nardwar, and he would go on to reimagine this format, making it more polished over time, but never losing its guerrilla style of filmmaking and interviewing. One of the things that I admire him for is that he learned from his mom's work that everyone, no matter how famous or regular they may seem, has a great story behind them, which is evident by who he chooses to do interviews with. He'd go on to upload Nardwar vs. Prime Minister Paul Martin shortly after, as well as uploading a song from the band he was a part of called The Evaporators. I almost forgot to mention that, but in 1986, Nardwar founded the band The Evaporators and is the current keyboard player and vocalist for the band. They're known for their antics and are heralded as one of the most entertaining bands ever to come out of Canada, combining garage rock with an insane onstage energy during their performances. Reading a short piece about them, they are described as not just a live band, rather raging out of control parties that make Animal House resemble a church picnic. During one of their live performances at Neptune Records, Nardwar can be seen crowd surfing while playing the keyboard, a perfect illustration of the band's absolutely insane enthusiasm. 
Anyways, back to his interviews, we'd see many different artists and popular figures show up on his YouTube channel throughout the 90s, such as Queens of the Stone Age, Slipknot, and Kurt Cobain, sometimes garnering millions of views. It was here where his format really started to take off. There's just something about him that catches you off guard, a sort of aura that follows Nardware wherever he goes. Although nowadays his interviews see a huge amount of attention, it didn't start that way. Nardwar had talked about these early interviews, saying sometimes they'd reach less than 20 people, but this didn't stop him from doing what he loved to do. Slowly but surely, he'd pick up steam and use a very effective technique to get his interviewees to take off their PR mask by bringing up seemingly innocuous details about their lives. He'd say these things generally without a question and instead just state them to the subject to see their reaction. The reactions range from being incredibly impressed with a common line being, how do you know that? all the way to just walking out of the interview. This is where his controversies come in that I'd mentioned at the beginning of this video. His interview style is loved by many, but some don't exactly have a great reaction to it and get visibly upset or annoyed. In an interview with Henry Rollins in 1998, Henry can be seen visibly annoyed and says, You only have like two more questions until we're done, so you gotta make it good. Another happens in his interview with Sebastian Bach from Skid Row where he was verbally attacked and his hat was stolen during the interview. He can often be seen wearing a toque or a beanie in many of his early interviews, but after that event he'd switch to wearing a plaid beret with a pom-pom on top. Nardwar would slowly go on to be one of the most famous interviewers in the entire music industry and now has over 2 million subscribers on his YouTube channel, which he still regularly uploads to. It's been known in the industry that having a Nardwar interview under your belt as an artist is a mark of having made it as a musician or a public figure. Nowadays, he's interviewed some of the largest artists in the entire world, like the late Juice World, Lil Uzi Vert, Kendrick Lamar, and hundreds more. Now I'd mentioned earlier that his leap from underground to icon was partially kickstarted because of the interviews he conducted with rappers whose reaction to his questions and gifts are clipped constantly. Famously, Lil Uzi Vert said, you know too much, and quickly ran out of the room in shock. Rappers like Kendrick Lamar and ASAP Rocky were taken by surprise when Nardwar casually mentioned oddly specific facts about their early lives like a local Popeyes in Kendrick Lamar's hometown which had bulletproof glass for windows, or the black ink gallery tattoo shop that ASAP Rocky used to go to. These clips have been watched tens of millions of times and have countless people uploading compilations and shorts of the most intense reactions from rappers. You can bet I've watched every single one of them because there's just something captivating about a famous person unraveling in confusion as to how a silly looking man in a beret has information about them that can't be found anywhere online. Since then, he's garnered millions of fans and continues to upload interviews to his own YouTube channel on top of appearing on his college radio station from time to time. Nardwar is a legend, there is no doubt about it. To close out my time with you, as Nardwar has far too many interviews and content to cover all of it, let's take a look at some of his classic Nardwarisms and iconic moments. In an interview with The Outline, Nardwar revealed where his signature sign-off came from. It was based on the song organ players would perform at the end of hockey games that he attended as a child. As I'd mentioned at the start of this video, Nardwar commonly uses props or gifts in his interviews such as signed albums or objects of significance to the subject from their early life. He's also said that he's tried sending tapes to major networks like MTV to be acknowledged in the mainstream media, but to no avail. But I think that might be a good thing, as he's never wavered from his frenzied style and utter commitment to interviewing anyone and everyone. As mentioned before, he starts off his interviews by asking, Who are you? Which gets the audience quickly familiarized with the artist without wasting too much time on the benign average press tour interview questions. He'll always end his interviews with the organist bit, along with Keep on rockin' in the free world! Which is a reference to the Neil Young song. The subject is expected to finish the last two notes from the organist song, but sometimes this doesn't happen, although most people are happy to play their part. Along with that, he'll end his line of questioning with Why should people care about J. Cole? Why should people care? Which is a fantastic way to get the subject to reveal information about themselves that they wouldn't have on your average shitty press tours that mass media produces. At the very end, Nardwar will smile at the camera and freeze in place while the person being interviewed walks off. At first glance, these could all be seen as gimmicks, but I don't think so. Nardwar is the sum of his parts, and these things do not define him even though people know him for them. Rather, I think he became a mainstay in the industry because of his absolutely absurd dedication to the craft, insane research which he still hasn't revealed how he gathers, and an emphatic charisma that cannot be replicated. If Nardwar is watching this, keep on rocking in the free world, my friend. 
Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video.